Hi, it's Deanna. Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. Today is an exciting day for me because a very important book arrived that I've been waiting for and wanting so badly. This is the Amy Oxford Punch Needle book. This is the, uh, the full title is Amy Oxford Punch Needing Rug Hooking, your complete resource uh, to learn and love the craft. So let's look at this book together and see what's in here. I'm gonna cover this on Coffee Time in a few minutes as well, but I wanted to give you a view on this book versus her first book, which we talk about time and time again, which is called, both of these published by Schiffer. And Schiffer is my absolute favorite. We talk about them all the time because they do a lot of books on antiques and they do a lot of books on crafts that we love. So the first one was called Punch Needle Rug Hooking Techniques and Designs. And we refer to this on Coffee Time on our channel over and over and over because it has filled us with inspiration uh, and history, right? This got us going on the history of George Wells and McAdoo Rugs, uh, the history of the Punch Needle. It's super, super, super great resource. But now we have the new one. And this really is, this is coming out as a hardcover. This is now available on Amazon. I think it's still in pre-order stage, but you might as well put it in because I promise you, you're going to need this book. This is gonna be big for people who are both rug hookers and punch needlers. Um, so let's see what's inside this that makes it different than the first Amy Oxford book. I'm gonna show you some pages as always, but I'm not gonna show you much of it because I want you to get it. You're going to love it and you will never regret getting it. It is filled with ideas and it's a beautiful format too. So in this book, Amy starts by saying the most essential things about punch needle. Now, most of us are rug hookers on the channel, but a lot of us are branching out to punch needle. And I just wanna remind you, the difference between rug hooking and punch needle is with rug hooking, you're pulling up with your rug hook with punch needle, you're punching down with a tool that's similar. It looks like a wooden syringe. You're pushing down with it and you're working backwards to forwards. Whereas with rug hooking, you're working by pulling up and you're working on the front of your project. So punch needle is different, but it's very similar. You're also using either wool strips or yarn. Um, and there are different things about punch needle that come into play. For example, gauge, if you're using yarn, and there is a big section on how you measure gauge, how you figure out what size punch needle you have for the size yarn you most often go to. Many people have many punch needles, and she talks all about this at the beginning of the book, uh, what you're going to need in terms of punch needle and yarn, how to make that match perfect. There's so many gallery pages in this book where you're seeing projects that people have done that are just literally awesome awe-inspiring, super inspiring. There are also projects in this book, and we'll get to that at the end. Now, she does a whole chapter one on the history of the punch needle. And I know for us on this channel, being such huge history lovers, uh, this chapter is really interesting. The history of the punch needle. We've talked a little bit about this, but not in this kind of detail. It really is a gorgeous intro to the craft, a nice historic perspective. All throughout the book, you've got color photos of punch projects that are just amazing. Some, this page was very sort of Matisse expressionist style. There are some that are very traditional like this one, right? It's very hard to tell the difference between this and a hooked rug. Uh, the, the technique is gonna be almost interchangeable. Just your tool in your hand is different. And you know, it's a great idea if you're a rug hooker to try punch needle because that pulling up motion on your wrist and on your arm thousands of times for one piece can get to be a lot. Whereas if you take a break and you start trying punch a little bit, you're doing the opposite motion and you're punching down. So if you give yourself a break and every few projects you alternate between rug hooking and punch needle, you're gonna find that your body feels better. It's just a thing about getting old, isn't it? It's just a thing about bodies. It's good to mix up your motions and your the stresses that you're giving your wrist and your arm. There are such pretty projects in here. I just have to show you another page. Look at how different these are. Very traditional pillow. The octopus is just wild. And then this really pop art Warhol sort of bubblegum girl. Um, it's very diverse and varied, the projects that are in this book and the finished gallery pieces. So she talks, she does a whole chapter about rug backing. And you know that's going to be important because we talk about this all the time. And the reason we talk about this all the time is because we try different things. You know, we're not all stayed and, and do the same things over and over. New people come in and the question comes up again. 
What backings do you use? What backings are the best for this? What backings are the best for that? What backing is the best for a sock yarn? What backing is the best for three ply yarn? The questions are going to be answered in that chapter about backing. And then the next chapter four is about transferring your design from paper to monk's cloth. So these are really practical things that we do indeed need to know and keep touching base on because techniques change too. And if you're a person who's always used a light box or always used the window and you're thinking about doing something different, it's good to read something new from a new book in terms of what the new techniques are and what the possibilities are. She does so many cool things. She, she's showing you a lot about using what we sometimes call fancy fibers, you know, not your straight wool yarns, but something a bit fancier, more of a texture or a, a sort of nap to it. She talks about that and shows that a lot in this book. So we're not just talking about straight wool and what color do you want? We're talking about what kind of feel do you want? Do you want it wild? You know, like the Canadian hookers are always using wild different textures. Um, she does a lot more of that in this book. And there's a great interview toward the end of the book with Amy. A lot of questions, um, you know, she's answering questions in a Q&A format that um, are really interesting from her perspective because she is the pioneer of punch. I mean, she really is. She gets into some other really handy things like backing. These are things that are hard to think about. You know, sometimes we tend to just do our finished pieces and put them off to the side and not block them and not finish them. And I am so guilty of that myself. But you know, when someone's telling you right way, wrong way, and showing you a diagram of what's right and wrong, I mean, it just makes you wish that everything in life was that simple, that someone could show you a picture of the wrong way and then show you a picture of the right way. So you just go in the hurry that we're always in. Oh, okay, I can see what the right way is. That's very helpful. Chapter nine is all about the punch needle sizes. And again, this is something we talk about a lot. What size should I get? Because there's a lot of sizes and then there's the fine versus the regular. So everybody I think who punches and it really enjoys themselves has more than one size, but that chapter will walk you through the differences in pile and the, the differences in the um, channel that goes through the punch needle that makes it fine versus regular. So you'll really get a good grip on what what you want to do. If you see something as being high pile with a lot of um, um, sort of texture and wildness versus something that's very controlled, more like a hook rug with a very even surface, that chapter is going to walk you through those questions. And then at the end, starting at chapter 10, she's got a bunch of projects. This is the cover project called the Pomegranate Project. Really, really beautiful rug. And she's got patterns for these and she tells you exactly what you need. She tells you this in this book because we know when we're measuring for rug hooking, you need about four times more wool than the surface that you're filling, the space that you're filling. It's going to be different with yarn and with punch needle. And it's going to be different really from needle to needle in terms of size, how much you're going to need. So looking at these projects and looking at her diagrams for how to judge how much you're going to need in terms of supplies, yarn, to complete a project, whether it's one of the ones in this book or one of your own, uh, it's going to be really helpful to have that gauge in your head so you're not overbuying. Nothing is cheap. You don't want to overbuy. You want to be sure you have enough, but not be ridiculous, you know, um, because projects are typically quite small unless you're really ambitious and you're doing the full size rugs. And if you are, good for you, right? So the back is just filled with a few um, projects that are really, look at this little one, how cute. What a sweet little one with the pomegranate pillow. And she's showing you how to do the pillow. So she's showing you how to finish it too. And what supplies you need right down to straight pins. Sometimes we forget the most obvious things, but um, really neat projects in this book. It really is. Um, it's very different than the first book. There's a lot of information that crosses over and a lot of projects I'm not showing you so you can be in suspense for when yours comes. The gallery is just over the top. It's over the top. You're just... Once you all have yours and we can look at them together, we'll just ovo. Um, there's a whole chapter on using strips of fabric. So that's really helpful because if you are also a rug hooker and you're thinking about switching to punch altogether or occasionally, you want to use your strips. You don't want all that expense to have been for nothing. You want to be able to use your strips, thin and wide ones, to punch with two. So this chapter is going to be about how to use those strips. That's extremely helpful. And then toward the end, she's got repairing and cleaning, sort of the restoration stuff that we sometimes have to do. And then at the very end, she's got chapters on, you know how much I love them, George Wells. 
And it's, it's slightly different information, but it's a lot of different pictures. So pictures that I've never seen of Wells Rugs, and we've covered George a lot, and I do love him. And another chapter on the McAdoo Rugs. And we talk about the McAdoo Rugs from time to time because they're so often popping up on eBay. Such an exciting history, but a little bit different information and certainly different rugs. Uh, in an interview at the end with McAdoo, and then her conclusion. So this really is, I love both of these books. I recommend both of these books. They are very different. I would not pick one over the other. I like having both. This has a lot of gallery stuff in it. It's very detailed how-to. It's very detailed. This one is also sets you up really well for how-to. They're very different. This apples and oranges here. So, you know, the things that are in this book, there's a, a little bit of an overlap, but in general, if you're able to, make sure that both of these books are in your collection because they're both really good inspiration books. And you know, there are a lot of rug hooking books, but there are not a lot of punch books out there. And this book is covering technique, how to get started, what's right, what's wrong, and the history of punch needle. So this is a huge thumbs up, as we knew it would be because we love Amy Oxford. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, check the Coffee Time videos because I'll be looking at both of these books from time to time ongoing uh, and otherwise check out either Amazon I'll put an affiliate link for Amazon on this video but also just have a look when you have time at the Schiffer website because they have a lot of books on history on antiques and on crafts and it's a lot of stuff that you might not just see in your typical searches it might be something when you have a minute in the coffee that you want to just go through and check out their titles because half of my bookshelf honestly is Schiffer books it's all interesting and it's all high quality books and they are not expensive the price is always right have a great day, everybody. I'll see you soon for coffee time.